Python is already one of the most loved programming languages in the world. But what people don't know is that they're going to like it even more with the features in Python 3.12. These new features will allow you to be faster, more thorough, and overall a better Python developer. Now, here's a fun fact. Using these new features as soon as they're available in 3.12 will put you in the top 89% of Python developers. And that's based on a statistic that 11% of Python developers will not use Python 3.12 when it's released. Just imagine that you're interviewing for a Python job or creating a small pull request for your company and you're enabling and using these new features. They are gonna be blown away that you are on top of everything that's released within Python. So let's dive in and let's visit the top seven features features of Python 3.12. Now, one of the features released with Python 3.12 is improved error messages. So what it's going to allow us to do is instead of just saying the library is not defined, it'll tell you what library you are forgetting to import. So for example, inside the name error, we can see that the normal error was name sys is not defined. If you go ahead and say sys.version info, but you don't import it, but now it'll tell us did you forget to import sys? This is going to be a huge improvement for many junior and beginner devs that are forgetting to import some kind of library or file into their application and then trying to use functionality that's part of that library. Now, part of this error message improvement is also going to be the improvement on self. So we can see here that it says improve the error suggestion for name error exceptions for the instances. So here we can see that if we have a class A that initializes a new variable and then we call a function where we assign that variable to something else, it'll also tell us, did you mean to use self here instead of just trying to mimic the variable above? Now, the second feature that is going to be implemented with Python 3.12 is syntactic formalization of F strings. So it'll allow us to be able to do more inside our F strings as we concatenate different types of variables. So before you were not able to use double quotation marks inside F strings because it would get confused with the initial double quotation marks of an F string, but now you're able to. So right here, you can now go ahead and say F string, this is the playlist where we have a double quotation mark of a comma followed by the join of the songs above. And there's also gonna be no explicit limit in how many F strings can be nested. So here we can see that we have an F string that is nesting another F string, nesting another F string, all the way down to one plus one. Here you can contain and nest as many F strings as you want in Python 3.12. Also now in Python 3.12, we can go ahead and define expressions spanning multiple lines and include comments on them. So for example, we can say an F string has a new join of lists where we write the expressions right here. In the old version of 3.11, F string expressions must be defined in a single line, even outside the F string expressions. And then one of the last features of the F strings that's coming in Python 3.12 is backslashes and Unicode characters. So before inside an F string, you are not allowed to use like emojis or Unicode characters or backslash because it was trying to interpret that as some type of code. But now we can, we can say this is the playlist with slash in dot join. So now there's going to be a new line for each join of the song. Or we can go ahead and say slash in black heart suit where we're passing in a heart emoji of the songs as well. Now, the third feature that is coming with Python 3.12 is the comprehension inlining, which is how you combine dictionaries, lists, and sets to be able to create new dictionary sets and lists from the original object. This overall will increase the execution of the comprehension by two times. But one thing to remember is that the comprehension iteration variables remain isolated. They don't overwrite a variable of the same name in the outer scope, nor are they visible after the comprehension. This isolation is now maintained via the stack and locals manipulation. Now this will be a good enhancement because before, you had to use a single use function object, which would then hold memory within the Python itself. And with the blow up of AI and machine learning and data science, you combine lists, sets, and dictionaries all the time. So this will increase many applications performances throughout all of Python. Now, the next update is going to be type hints. And type hints is getting a pretty big revamp within Python 3.12. And we'll start with it by using the typed dictionary for more precise keywords keyword arguments. 
But what we can do here is pass in typed dictionary, make an object part of typed dictionary. So we can see right here, class movie is inheriting typed dictionary with name string and year integer. And then we can unpack all of the movie characteristics as keywords into the function of foo. Before we were not able to do this, and this is just a much more precise way for us to be able to handle dictionary objects in Python. The next big update in Python 3.12 is gonna be the decorator for static typing. Now this was already a feature in Java and some other object-oriented programming languages, but in Python, they never had something like the at override. And the at override is what you pass into a child class saying that that functionality could be getting overwrote. And it helps with the compiler and it also helps with future developers. So for example, if we have our base class and it says get color, this base class is inherited from our good child and our bad child. So the good child get color will override the base get color, but as you can see, the bad child's get color is spelled a little differently, so it does not override the base get color and it will throw an error, allowing us to know that, hey, this get color is not overriding anything. So it helps with the compiler, it helps with the developer, and it also helps with other developers on the team. Now, the next big update is PEP695, which is the type parameter syntax, where the generic classes and functions were declared using a verbose syntax that left the scope of type parameters unclear and required explicit declarations of variance. Now, this new update introduces a new and more compact and explicit way to create generic classes and functions. So what we can see here is that we have a new function of max where we pass in a generic where it says arguments iterable of that generic and then we return a new generic. So we can say the class list of the generic will get item where we pass in in the arguments and then return a generic of some type and same with append. So this new declaration will allow us to be able to create generic classes and generic functions easier, which will probably create more frameworks and libraries in the future. Some of the top object-oriented programming languages in the world are reliant on a huge collection of generics. So adding an easier and explicit way to create generic classes in Python will pave the way of creating new innovations of frameworks and libraries within the Python programming language. And now for the big biggest update of Python 3.12 is PEP684, which is a per interpreter for the GIL. So we now are able to use sub interpreters with a unique GIL per interpreter. This allows Python programmers to now be able to take full advantage of the multiple CPU cores. Now this has been a huge issue of Python where Java and C Sharp, C++, all of these backend object oriented programming languages were able to use multiple threads, which essentially would increase performance by a lot. Python has always been known as the slow programming language, and a lot of this has been because of the GIL. The GIL does not allow for multiple cores or multiple threads within the programming language. Now, PEP684 will not be fixing everything that we need with the multi-threads, but we can see that a Python API is anticipated for the release of 3.13. But this whole video is about 3.12, but the Python API that will allow us to even do more with the GIL is expected for 3.13, which will solve so many issues that Python is experiencing when we talk about performance or comparing to other popular object-oriented programming languages. If you like this video, go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment, and check out this video, which will teach you how to use JWTs in Python and Fast API. And I will see you in the next video.